Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on the Drill Music Explosion. Drill is one of the fastest growing music genres on streaming and social media platforms. From its roots in violent gang culture to chart topping hits, drill beats are being used in new and exciting ways and gaining millions of fans around the world. Bronx bred drill artist Ron Suno is racking up more than 11 million YouTube views with his hit song, What They Gonna Say. He's on the leading edge of New York City's expanding drill music scene. Suno says making music gives him a way to express how he feels. So if I'm going through something in my life, like say if I have like anxiety or depression or anything like that, music gives me a way I can escape it. Suno acknowledges the criticism that drill promotes violence and says its popularity with youth actually helps prevent it. It keeps the kids off the streets. You know, I feel like being in the studio is just like playing basketball. It's a hobby. You know, it, it, it keeps kids away from what's the real world about and like everything that's going on in the streets. Hot 97 personality and drill music producer DJ Drewski has Suno on a feature with Ross Swish. Drewski produced for the late Pop Smoke and says the growth is obvious. I understand the influence it has on the younger generations, what it has on the youth. And I think, you know, people now are paying attention more than ever. So I'm excited to see where it's going. Like, I still feel like it's at its early stage. It hasn't peaked yet. Where it's going is anywhere and everywhere. The drill phenomenon is international. In South Korea, K-drill rappers like Jimmy Page of Silky Boys represent contemporary life. In the UK, where Drill originated, the duo Pete and Bass has earned more than one million YouTube views with their own unique interpretation, crossing generations. There's even Jersey Drill, like Bandman Rill's Jiggy and Jersey, or Baby ATM's Too Fast. Let's find out more about this from our panel. Joining me is Mark Ellibert. He's a hip-hop journalist and commentator. Mark, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you. Also with us is New York City's own Ron Suno, he is a hip hop artist, multifaceted, also a drill mm -hmm. artist. He has a hit single, which you probably already heard, called What They Gonna Say. More than 30 million streams and views across social media platforms. As they say in the culture, he's killing it. Ron, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Ron Suno, I know the vibes. Thank you, thank you so much. Also with us is Hot 97 DJ Drewski. He's also a drill music producer. He is one of the uh, people who really kind of led the way for New York Drill several years ago, worked closely with Pop Smoke and has worked with a lot of other artists. And he says it is exploding. There's all kinds of new sounds coming into it. So first we'll find out what that's all about. But Drewski, great to have you with us. Of course, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Drewski, when we talk about Drill, what exactly are we talking about? It's, it's a sound. It's an energy, it's a feeling that, you know, you take the beats that are being produced and, and the artists and their style, their, their cadence, their flow, and, and you put it together. And especially in New York, you know what I'm saying? It's now a culture. And shout out to Ron Suno, who's with us today. Like, he was one of the early artists to doing it, like, doing it in the Bronx, right? Because you have Brooklyn artists that were doing the drill music that really kicked it off in, in New York, but then it started shifting and... You know, even him joking around and saying he's the king of Bronx drill, but he was one of the early ones on it. So it's, it's just like an energy that's going on in the city mixed with a, a certain sound. Ron, tell us how you how you came into the whole music scene and and why why drill has been this thing that has really launched you into a whole new stratosphere. See, I, I definitely want to give credit to like the Chicago drill because I feel like Chicago definitely paved the way for the artists in New York to um brand off their own sound and feel like just grasp onto a, a, a new cadence to a new wave. So I feel like me listening to like Chief Keef growing up um 50 Cent, that that motivated me to like get into like the drill lane of music. You feel me like the aggression like that drill brings because I feel like drill is a genre where you could express yourself in an emotion where if you angry or if you feel like you have that like that energy you could put it on the beat. You feel what I'm trying to say? So it's like poetry. So when you hear when, when producers send you beats or you're li mm -hmm. you're listening to beats how do you like what are the characteristics when you hear like oh that's a drill that's a hot drill beat i could do something on that is there anything like that yeah so like i feel like with drill beats is a it's a certain bpm that it have it has like a like uh how you said the, the 808s 808s are more aggressive you know what i'm trying to say like 
when I hear beat, I gotta hear how rest of the airways are. And then most likely when you hear a drill beat coming from the Bronx, because you know we all have different sounds like like Brooklyn drill is different from Bronx drill, Queens drill, like everybody has their own sound. When it I feel like Bronx drill caters onto samples. So when you hear a sample, you, you already know it's a drill beat going on. Right. And, may, and maybe even a Bronx, like a Bronx artist, too, when you, mm -hmm. when you hear that. Mark, in, in terms of the drill scene, what do we see happening globally with this? We're seeing a lot of people tapping into it. Um, you know, the last time I was here talking to you, I said that, you know, New York uh, sets the trends and people like to follow what we're doing out here. And since hip hop has become so much bigger now and a bigger entity, it's being seen, this whole wave is being seen in countries like Italy and Japan and Korea and stuff like that. So it's only gonna keep growing from here. Luki, what is it about the sound that you think appeals to, to so many people and especially to really young hip hop fans? Uh, like Ron said, it's, it's an emotion, right? So whether you're angry or you're sad, there's drill music for that. Then if you wanna turn up and party and dance and, and there's dance moves to drill records. So it's like at both ends of the spectrum, you could get emotions out of it and then just what they're talking about a lot of the kids can relate to it you know the, the things that are going on in the world are going on in their hood they're talking about it and living it on these records and the, the fans can relate to it and you know it's just it's just a, a culture now too right because you see artists from the bronx that are doing drill music and artists from brooklyn that are doing drill music now coming together artists from the bronx and jersey doing jersey drill music so it, it became a culture and, and you know once something is hot everybody wants to be a part of it so if you weren't on it early you realize okay this is what's going on in the world this is what's going on in music and i right. want to be a part of it and i think that's where we're at now there's more to come don't go away Ron, in, in, in terms of the different types of, of drill music you see now why are so we seeing so many artists coming out of the bronx now like really great artists I feel like the music now is evolving because it's like drill became more something to to you could dance to. Like before, I feel like with drill, when it first came to New York, it was more so catering to the UK sound. It was more grittier. And then when Bronx got in, it became more lava, more loose. So it's like as 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 the music get bigger with, with the Bronx, there's new artists that's coming in with more fun sounds, more more words that's like opening for everybody to do it. Before it was like, it was a selective few that that can make drill, you know what I'm trying to say? But now it's an open lane for anybody to do it. Mm -hmm. now, why did you why did you make the move? Because you were had a successful career as a comedian, social media influencer, doing a, a lot of things like that. What, what made you really just go like, I gotta get into this? Me personally, I've been, I've been doing music like since I was 14 years old. I'm 21 right now. So when I was 14, I started my first drill song. It was called Murder. And I feel like, my personality building up with my music it was a great time for me to go to at once you know what i'm trying to say because i feel like i have something different and, and and it separates me from a lot of rappers to create my own lane and have everybody else follow that way mark in terms of in terms of internationally and in terms of other places are they following it because it's the trend because new york has made it so big or what do you think is happening um, well, you know, the one thing I want to bring up and say is that, you know, hip hop is one of the biggest forms of expression for the culture. And there hasn't been a sound that really people could use to say what's going on in the streets. And that's pretty much more or less how drill came up. These kids are talking about what's going on in the streets. Kids from other hoods internationally are seeing that like, oh, this is a new way for us to get off whatever we got to get off. And they're going to start doing that. And it's just, we're seeing history repeat itself and we're seeing hip hop evolve in different ways. And that's just really all it is. These kids are finding a new outlet to, you know, let off their emotions, let off their story, seeing what's going on in front of them and letting people know like, yo, this is what's going on out here. Not necessarily saying this is what we're doing, but this, this is what's happening in front of us. So let's try to figure something out with that. Drewski, you, you have your finger on the pulse of what's what's new and what's up and coming and what's bubbling and just about to, to break to break really big. Why do you think drill music is like so, it, it just really is reaching out to people in this kind of crazy time that we're in now coming out of the pandemic and yet life is still crazy every other day, it seems. You know, there's all these changes and there's a lot of uncertainty, especially for, you know, for our youth. What do you, what do you see in drill that really kind of answer, speaks to that? No, I just think it's an outlet for, you know, the, the artists to express themselves. And then once they start realizing 
it's bigger than just New York. They see artists like Kanye West and Alicia Keys jumping on drill records. They see artists like Drake who are like international superstars, you know, following the wave. Then they go, oh, wow. Like, this is, I, I was born into it, right? You get a 14-year-old kid from the Bronx or Brooklyn, they were just born into the sound of this drill music. So now they see these huge superstar artists doing it and they're like, yeah, I, I'm going to do it. it. It was birth here. Like they feel like they own it. So, you know, they're like, yo, if they're doing it, I could do it and I can express myself and I could change my life through the music. You know, a lot of these artists are able to take themselves out of a bad situation doing drill records, you know, and if, if, if it hits, boom, now they got diamond chains and living in nice condos. You see, Ron Suno. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Ron, what, what about that in terms of what it speaks to right now? Like how the how the music is is helping people express themselves and people who listen to it. It's kind of like lets you let out a certain energy and, and aggression, aggression too sometimes, you know? Yeah, I feel like definitely one thing I can say about this lane is like, it keeps a lot of kids off the streets because we, we are in the studio too. So it's like, when you got a lot of rappers that that's outside, you feel me? They go in the booth. That's the way it's done. It's exciting keeping with the real world going on, like any situation that they're going around. So it's like, when you in the booth and you get to connect the dots and being there, it's a different feeling. So it's like, artists is that, that get that opportunity and they're able to pass it on, it creates a, uh, for me, so it's like, we're not as like stereotypicalized, like we, we bad people or such a thing like that. We got our own career that we can feed our family with a whole foundation behind it. And do you feel like the, do you feel like Bronx artists that there's a certain sense of like, oh, we're from the Bronx, we're kind of like, extended family or is it is it super competitive i mean the bronx the bronx is it's a competitive sport you know because everybody's trying to win but we all want the same thing like we all want to do the same thing we all trying to feed our family we all have the same vision and that's and that's the main point part like mm -hmm. as, as 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 the bronx sound grows and you can see a lot of artists getting older there's a people that's connecting to, to each other that wasn't connecting before so it's a lot going on right now it's, it's, a, it's a different feeling no, totally. Mark, when you talk about it, it goes back to hip hop's roots. Are you talking about hip hop as being a way of expressing, you know, what's going on in the streets that's, that's really not being understood or conveyed in the quote unquote mainstream media? Yeah. Um, you know, again, hip hop has become such a commercial entity right now, and it's all about the money. So um, guys aren't necessarily, guys and uh, women aren't necessarily rapping about what's going on in the street. They always say once they make it out, they're rapping about something different now. So again, you know, the streets needed something to get their story off. And then, you know, Drill came up and it's grown into this bigger thing. Brewski, all of a sudden Cardi B comes out. Mm -hmm. And what did that do for, for drill music and for Bronx artists when that happened? No, I, I think it was just so real, you know, like it just felt so real when you see Cardi B come out, you know, to support these young drill artists. I think people realize like, wow, you know, it's a community at this point, right? Like where artists stick together. And if you're from a certain borough or a certain hood, it's like, yo, let's stick together. Let's ride out together. And I think that's what, Cardi showed by coming out on a festival stage to show love, you know, not just to the drill community, but to her own community. And, and it, it makes other artists and people realize like, okay, this is not a fly by night thing. Like this is gonna be around for a while. So let's all tap in. You're talking about the unity, but I have to bring up what's been in the news, what people who aren't familiar with the culture and mm -hmm. the music, you know, are familiar with. They hear drill rap being used as you know, an up and coming drill rapper, you know, a, a young teenager maybe involved in criminal activity or gang activity. And then does, does that give, does that give other drill artists a bad name? Do you think? I mean, necessarily, it, I feel like it's, it's everyday life though, because if you look at what's going on around the world, it's always a, a situation with everybody, but it's just like with, with drill, it's just a, a different type of light on it because we, we already, Cater into the sound of it. So when you have pounds of wood around it, it's going to be bigger than what it is. But I feel like it's, it's, it's always something around everywhere, like in different genres, something going on. Through, through every type of music. Mark, what about that? What do you think? Um, yeah, um, the only thing, you know, I wish for like drill music is that, you know, these artists continue creating, but creating in a way that doesn't let those higher powers look at us and be like, oh, what is it that they're doing right? 
right now. Because again, you know, um, they're paying way more attention to these lyrics and these music videos way more than ever now. And as hip hop grows, that's only gonna bring more eyes to it. And, you know, a lot of these artists may not understand the art of like lyricism and like, you know, you know, instead of directly saying what happened, you tell a story through it. You know, all the rappers from back in the day told crazy stories and made us wonder like, did that really happen? Um, these days, it's, I don't see it like that because again, hip hop is growing more and it's growing out to more people and there's more people trying to rap and they're not really understanding the art form and hiding it. And, you know, I just wish that, you know, to keep this wave alive because it's very important and New York hasn't had it in a while, continue finding ways to make it grow. Don't give them a reason to look at it and be like, you know, oh, let's look at it and see what they're doing and lock them up for no reason because right. we see what's going on out here. That was another recent show that we did. Bruski, what, what, what about that in, term, in terms of the image of drill? It doesn't seem to be slowing the pace or, you know, any, any of the, the negativity, especially that what was around, you know, in early 2022. Right. It, it doesn't seem to be slowing the popularity of it or the, the way people are embracing it at all. The, that whole term, like, all press is good press. I think, you know, that's what's helped drive in it. But even hip hop, from back in the day was looked at in a negative way at first. And that was the biggest, you know, the biggest genre of music out hip hop and, and drill being under that umbrella and being the new form of hip hop. People are gonna always look at the negative side of it first, but there are great sides of it. You know, in a business aspect, you see labels signing multiple drill artists because business-wise it makes sense, you know, for the youth it's, it's influencing them. So there's power in it. You know, the artists are making away from themselves from this music. So, of course, you know, the media a lot of times want to focus on the negative, but there is a whole other side to drill music. Yeah, you have, positive you side. Of, right. Um, Ron, in, in, in terms of your own personal life, how has, you, has your life changed, you know, especially these last several years, you know, you, when you've been doing the, the music professionally? Like, when my life changed because... I, I found myself more safer than, than than I was because when I do the more I do music, the more I elevate my life. So I feel like I was able to stay away from my everyday struggles, stay away from all the all the negativity that I was working for to, to be in this position. So it's like music definitely blessed my life, and, and especially this this category of, of music. So I'm definitely appreciative for that. Mark, uh, Fabio said a few things though recently you, you were telling us about. Break that down for us. Yeah, uh, he was uh, sitting with Gilly the Kid and Wallow on their Million Dollars uh, Worth of Game podcast. And he was discussing uh, Pop Smoke's legacy and uh, explaining how he thought, um, he didn't know where drill music was going to go after Pop Smoke died. He really thought that. And him, and he said himself and other artists didn't think it would have gotten to this level. And, you know, it was just interesting to hear that because there's a lot of people who still think that that way, including uh, Joe Budden. He said the same comments as well during his podcast. He said uh, this new crop of drill artists are so aggressive and uh, they're they have no filter with these records that they're basically signing the, the death certificate for drill music because law enforcement and NYPD is paying attention to what they're doing. So it's just crazy to hear that because you see the opposite happening. We're seeing it in Jersey. We're seeing it in Italy. Um, Korean drill, that's crazy. But like, you see what's going on with that. So just to, just to hear and see people think that drill's not gonna go anywhere, but we're seeing the opposite, it's just wild. Yeah, and what you're, ta what you're talking about, which we've done a couple of shows, shows about is, it, it's one thing for somebody, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing for somebody to like nuke, nuke Bizzle or Nuke Bizzle, the guy in, in California, who was doing these PP, um, you know, these, these COVID relief frauds and rapping like, you know, you have to sell cocaine, I just file a claim. And he was actually filing <laughs> claims, you know, and then another guy was rapping about robbing ATMs and he was actually robbing ATMs. I mean, exactly, that's, yeah. that, that's one thing that you're basically self snitching and giving, a, you know, the, giving the police a, the, the case on, on a silver platter. But I, I think that's, I think that's a, a small percentage, Drewski. Am I, am I right on that? Or what, what's your take on that? It's definitely a small percentage, but they like to highlight it. But my whole take on it is let's just enjoy it while it's here. Right. Let's not even think about when it's ending or what. Who cares? Like, let's enjoy it now. The right. kids love it. The clubs love it. The people love it. 
let's keep spreading it and, and let it just, you know, live its, on its own. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on the Drill Music Explosion. You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all. <laughs> <laughs>